Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is time for AMA number 22, the first one under the sandbox umbrella. I don't know what this hand gesture was, but we've committed to it, so we just uh, we stick to it. If you have any questions, ask them on the Discord, the Patreon, or the Aria Mara Canon subreddit. We have 1.6k readers. If you have any discussions that you want to get involved in, just uh, jump in on the Aria Mara Canon subreddit. It's... Uh, the better version of our League of Legends, but uh, the bar is set very low right now because right now it's all it is is Look at this guy! He's a pro player and he called me NA! It's uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely hilarious, let's be honest. With that being said, let's jump right into the questions. If you enjoy these type of videos, then just uh, subscribe. Yeah, I went there. First question. Runners Club, how did the deal with Sandbox come to be? Also, Pog, Pog indeed. The deal came to be, uh, well, during this off-season, well, the off-season between spring and summer, the off-season, uh, well, in November was kind of a tragedy for me. Uh, Sandbox reached out, Sandbox reached out and, uh, you know, wow. Uh, I had uh, a lot of offers to entertain at the time, and uh, I was particularly curious about the great challenge that uh, coaching a team in the LCK is going to be. Working with the players of Sandbox, uh, I think they have a lot of potential, I think they have a lot of great players, I think they have um, you know, great staff as well that I will get to work with, Joker and Fantasy, all the Starker fans out there should know the name Fantasy. Joker was a former support player. Uh, we have uh, so many great people, uh, so many great players as well. It is going to be refreshing for me to to work with an army, because uh, in my past teams usually it was me, an analyst, and a manager, and then five players. Here I have uh, many players that can challenge uh, each other and to push each other to become better and better. So it was just uh, the natural fit, you know, because I think there is a lot of potential here, and I think it was the right move to do. I am uh, super excited and uh, I am so reinvigorated, you know, you, you know, you guys recognize this feeling of when you wake up in the morning and it doesn't feel slow, it just feels like you open your eyes and you're just happy to be awake, <laughs> you're just happy to be awake regardless of how many hours you slept and you're just ready to go, that's... The, the feeling I'm at right now, you know, I'm so motivated, so hungry to, to make this work and uh, I know the players uh, feel the same, so I'm super excited. Fruit Junkie 007 asks, do you think the misfits with Kobe can challenge Rogue, Mad Lions or Orechen, Orechen for the fourth place in summer? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it is definitely an upgrade. I think that the thing that worries me though is Koba as a player is not so assertive. I think um, trusting uh, a player like Koba to solve the issues that Misfits had in regards to playing around Borom, uh, this is not Koba's strength. Uh, Koba is, is, is great at using resources when they're given to him, but he's not so good at demanding resources. This was my, my impression a very, very long time ago. Koba is a fantastic player, you know, on Splicer work because Everyone on that team knew, oh, if we set up cover for success, he's going to deliver. And that's what he does, right? But Misfits struggled in the setting up process. So this is something they will need to tackle as a team. Uh, Denik is, is, is a good player. I think uh, Kobe is a definite upgrade over Bivoy. I think uh, Kobe, when he reaches those points in time, you know, especially his form before he left TSM was fantastic. And I've always told Kobe, if he believes in himself, he is unstoppable so i'm super excited i think definitely they can challenge for top positions i'm not so sold on rogue or mad lions uh, i think mad lions is going to be in a tricky position when mid lane meta shifts and top lane meta shifts we were in a position where mad lions had a lot of success because rome was always playing weak side even weak side he was dying a lot you know he's just uh, I, I don't know what it is with mad lions and splice but uh, their top lane is just tend to die super much uh, isolated deaths, you know, this was Vichichachi's special. And I think Humanoid is very strong in this meta because 
he is allowed to play exactly what he wants to play. And that is the kind of position that the mid lane meta was in. Obviously, there were some things that were more successful than others. You know, some of the most scaling picks in mid were the ones that were the most dominant, like the Corky and the Azir. But uh, the meta was kind of wide open, you know. And I think when, when the meta becomes more specific, I think... Uh, uh, these are situations where a player like Humanoid could be worse. But then again, Humanoid has improved. Orome played his first split. So these are things that can be a subject of change. This is just if they follow the same trajectory, you know. So Humanoid definitely uh, could uh, prove wrong. And everything that I am saying right now could be wrong. These are just some estimations and uh, kind of projections. Because Humanoid has improved. Orome, you know. Uh, entered a lot on the restored die, die to dives and so forth and uh, that's all right you know maybe uh, in, a, in a meta where mad lions are focused on playing around topside it might look different but then again i think mad lions most impressive players are kaiser and karzi and i think the other three are not on the same uh, level as these two and then in regards for or or origin i just think they are a solid third i think origin is a bit underrated you know origin did well against G2, did fine against Fnatic. I think Upset is a fantastic player, very, very strong player. He is tearing up uh, the whole offseason. You know, he is leading his team to victories and playing super, super well at the same time in Soul Q. It is um, very exciting to watch. And I think Origin is very underrated. I think Nuktak is underrated. I think Nuktak uh, and Upset and Alfari are uh, very, very strong individual players. I'm a bit worried for Origin because of Destiny, but uh, he has his moments too, so I think Origin is still a solid third. KDRAMI614, when will you get another lore video and you should impersonate Jax? Uh, another lore video, uh, it might happen now because there's no conflict of interest for me to just read some lore uh, because of Sandbox, of course. I'm working as a head coach now, so I can't do uh, so much anal uh, 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 like analytical content so maybe we should uh, do another lore video uh, it could be possible i am so sorry I, I have noticed many times i begin series and then i just don't continue and um, my mind kind of wanders all over the place uh, like i want to do one thing then i uh, shift my mind and i just don't want to do content that like my heart is, isn't in it and i know that as a person the moment i begin something i just see you know, the end game, you know, like when I was doing the first lore video, I began to see like, oh, let's, let's see, let's create a world where we have every single part of the lore covered and we just have like these pieces that connect to each other, you know, and in the end I made two videos only and uh, uh, sometimes more stressing things take over and uh, I just, when I, when I commit to something, I want to, I envision myself doing, you know, the most spectacular thing out of it and sometimes uh, it's just not feasible it's just a part of how i am so i apologize sometimes that i start something and then it kind of fizzles out it's also based off of, of course community feedback you know that the lore videos are some of the least watched videos and uh, that's okay you know that's okay sometimes because they were fun to do but as long as something's fun to do uh, i'll continue to do it and for me uh, I didn't feel as excited as I was in the beginning after, you know, a couple of videos. And then also for the Jax impersonation. Who wants a piece of the champ? Here's to you, kid. Who's next? Imagine if I had a real weapon. Let's, let's leave it at that. Elkun Johnny asks, thoughts on the tournament between LCK versus LPL? Who is going to win the tournament and which players are you most looking forward to? I think, honestly... In the past, I would say IG because they have the potential to be so insane. But that has been, you know, a big question mark ever since MSI 2018. So to me, you know, that dream is uh, not 2018, sorry, 2019. Uh, that dream to me is, is, is kind of dead. I don't think they're going to figure out how to play as a team. I don't think they're going to figure out how to play with their jungler. They need to kind of revamp uh, their team, even though individually they have some of the best players. Puff is really good. Rookie and the Shy, there are arguments to be made that they are the best in their position. When we saw Rookie versus um, Knight in the best of five that they played, Rookie was playing without a jungler and did so much damage. Rookie with a strong jungler that understands him could be still by far the best mid laner. And I think the same for the Shy. But 
I am done with putting my chips into that basket because I don't think they're going to solve those issues. IG is the last team in the world to have ever been successful based on individual skill alone. And I think in this season that has also died. When I look at who is going to win it all, I honestly want to put my bets on Top Esports. I think Top Esports looked like the stronger team. And I think a lot of the issues that they showed against JDG are things that can be solved. I think right now you just need to have a mid laner that is capable of beating everyone. And I think Knight is that. Uh, he's also capable of losing against the top end, but it's you, you don't go into a matchup thinking Knight is going to be uh, much weaker than anyone else. And I think that's a massive strength. I think Yagao is a player that does very well on Leblanc, but other than that, I think, um, you know, yeah, lost words, you know? And I think uh, Topis was definitely could have won that series, and I think the issues they showed are issues that can be solved. So I am uh, excited about uh, Toby Sports. And then the question is uh, for, uh, of course, everyone is T1. You know, is T1 going to do do well? Uh, I think T1, always when they are in playoffs, it feels like they don't face, or they make it look easy, I would rather say. They make it look easy. Genji looked completely disoriented in that finals. You know, uh, Genji, of course, got auto-seeded to the first seed, and uh, I think uh, they looked very lost against T1. T1 understood how they wanted to draft, and uh, Genji was kind of pseudo trying to copy them, but at the same time forgetting what their strengths are. BDD looked like a ghost of himself, and whenever Clit plays against T1, he just uh, didn't perform even in the regular season. And um, that was hard to judge. DRX at the same time, I think DRX is a team that can do some serious damage to some of the uh, Chinese teams because uh, they are very similar in the regard that uh, they are drafting very, very early uh, game uh, centric uh, picks that need to snowball in order to succeed. And I think uh, T1 is a very disciplined team that can, uh, you know, uh, play in a way to, to definitely uh, dissolve this. And I think. Uh, if DRX found more balance in the way they draft, they could be very dangerous too. But all in all, yeah, Toby Sports, let's leave the discussion at that. Germ Shroom asks, Hey, no, you probably don't want to give too much away, but are you planning on coaching the classic Korean style that your team is probably more used to? Or do you hope to bring some spice and variation to the LCK? Good luck coaching in the LCK. I think we should be very careful about labeling how we approach things and how we think about things. I don't want to uh, have, I don't want to be labeled as a, you know, my philosophy is European coaching or Korean coaching. You need to be able to uh, adapt and be open minded. When you tie your identity to, you know, a label, uh, I think we lose uh, the essence of being open minded. Because I think there's a lot of, even though the LCK hasn't won the World Championship the last two years, um, there's a lot of things that they do right. Uh, Europe uh, haven't won the World Championship, but uh, they've had, uh, a, you know, decent, moderate success. Still, you know, there are a lot of great things to take away from there. So you just need to be open-minded and, you know, just do what you think is best. Don't tie yourself into something, and I'm not going to tie myself into something either. I'm going to approach the situation with an open mind, and then, you know, I have an idea and a philosophy of how I want to approach things, and then you have to be ready to deal with any issues that might arrive. Alex Conrado, do you think Forgiven will come back to pro play in the future? Well, it was very disappointing his return. You know, we, we were hoping that he had learned from his past mistakes, you know, uh, his past issues uh, that were, you know, expressed by some of his past teammates or what it seemed to be outwards. O obviously, I'm just speaking based on what I've heard. I don't know how he is. It's based on what I've heard. And it seems like, you know, there's a lot of truth to it because the story seems always very much, pretty much the same. And uh, with that being said, uh, I think Forgiven might come back to pro play, but maybe in different games. I think uh, in League of Legends, it looks pretty dead because the stock value of Forgiven is so, so low and his expectations for what people, his perceived, like his own perceived value is so much higher than what everyone else's perceived value. And I don't think Forgiven has the ego to lower himself down there again and to work himself up. I think, uh, you know, 
definitely maybe in a different game. I think Forgiven should play a 1v1 game, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, enough about that. Aussie Kings of Kings 11. What does Lena getting overheard of on double lift stream situations say about the level of professionalism or lack thereof in the esports industry? I can't imagine any other industry where the CEO can have a phone call about the value of another employee in front of an employee they're dating while streaming the conversation to thousands. Does this prevent esports from being taken seriously by investors, sponsors, or talent? Well, I think there's been. Like I can point to situations that are even more absurd than this in other uh, businesses. I remember there was, um, you know, uh, I think the CEO of Reddit himself went into the code of Reddit and changed someone's comment to make them come across as, you know, something else, something like that, you know, and that was a big, big scandal too. I think scandals happen in other industries too, and I don't think we should just pretend just because we're in this bubble of esports and that's where we, our energy is focused that you know everything is is problem free in other industries i think still uh, it is it puts a bad light on esports sure but i don't think people that are going to provide value and actually you know be involved in a way that is going to be impactful or are honestly going to see this as the big red alert you know if, if this is going to make them back out or think wrong of esports they were already on the fence and those are the type of people that are not so important uh, for esports and the the, the, the build-up of esports and the investors and the sponsors and talent that you mentioned so to me you know there are still fantastic examples of organizations that do things right and i think they are the main examples that uh, that people look to if they are looking to uh, be involved. Scandals happen everywhere. They really do. I think it's it's easy to find them if you look for them. There's been scandals in professional sports where, you know, uh, like I remember there was something with Benzema and there was something with uh, Neymar and there was something with uh, Maradona and, and something else. You know, there is if, if you look deep, there are scandals everywhere and it, it just happens. People make mistakes and uh, people are involved in esports, people are involved in other walks of life too. So it happens. For, for God's sake, Bill Clinton had this whole scandal too, you know. It's, it's just, it's everywhere. People are people. People fuck up. Bahando Efevish. Will you move to Korea for your new head coach position? Yes, we're in the process of processing the visa and uh, hopefully I'll be flying soon. Axelman9000 asks, your thoughts on Sneaky? Was he the reason C9 wasn't performing too, performing too well as well as they are right now? You know, at the time, the fact that there was any discussion at all, as a person that has watched Sven play, played against Sven, and watched, been a team with Sven for two weeks, and, you know, competed against Sven, I knew that he was much better than Sneaky. Much better than Sneaky. Sneaky was not a strong laner, and uh, I think Sneaky as a person has a very big fan base, naturally, because of C9, uh, C9's success and how successful his stream is, and his cosplay. <laughs> uh, he has a big fan base, and he's been very, very, you know, reaction or... From, like, I, I don't know Sneaky personally, I don't know, but my impression is that he doesn't take criticism that well. Most recently, there was this clickbait video, I understand this editor made it about how, you know, Santorin and uh, and and uh, Ignar flame him, so to speak, but uh, all in all, like that was also, you know, a bit petty, you know. I think uh, maybe Sneaky doesn't take criticism that well, and I think uh, it is difficult for a player to be around for so long as, as Sneaky did to, to and also perform at the highest level. And I think this was, you know, this was the right time to move on. It, it, it just was. And, and Jack is a very smart businessman. Reaper is very smart too when it comes to his team. And uh, I wouldn't doubt any moves that C9 does. You know, C9, when it comes to their team, they've been very, very accurate. So whenever they make their next move, I think it is wise to put uh, faith in, in C9. They've, they've definitely earned it. 
and uh, I don't think uh, if Sneaky was on C9 that they would be anywhere close to how good they are now. Shimna asks, uh, Hello Maro, now you're going to coach Sandbox in the LCK. Congratulations on that, thank you very much. Are you going to still keep up with the content and the other leagues? Or is it going to be left for off-season and stuff like that, focusing purely on the coaching role? I'm going to focus purely on the coaching role. We'll do occasional AMAs when I have some off time, because I need to take breaks too, right? And uh, this will be my break. I think taking him and doing these AMAs is a lot of fun. It doesn't take uh, that much effort, and I get to interact with the community and uh, stay involved. But of course, there's a severe conflict of interest, so I, I cannot answer every question. Like if there's a strategic question or an analytical question, uh, in many cases, I won't answer those. So it, it will just be a bit different because first and foremost, my position and my duty to sandbox uh, comes first and I cannot um, put anything uh, above that, even though the content might have been better or come across as better if I did some, some content that uh, was uh, analytical or something. I, I don't want to put ever the team I'm working for in a worse position. So of course, my number one focus is head coaching sandbox because it's going to take a lot of effort. Obi and Kenobi asks, Korea is somewhat known for not adapting a lot. Do you think that because of that, more input coaches might be brought from LPL ADC to try to innovate the playstyle? I guess it depends on how <laughs> my journey with sandbox is gonna go. <laughs> Astro asks or says, Hey, I am trapped in the dirty dog saloon. Can you ring me a bastard Uber? I am as drunk as dog eating a Sunday roast. I can't see straight. My girlfriend's gone back home with another man and left me on my own with the bill. I can't afford pay it. Never mind a f***ing Uber. That's it for today's AMA. Thank you so much for uh, joining and participating. And uh, uh, this is uh, AMA number 22. Please uh, subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Uh, see you guys next week. Ask your questions on the Arya Matkin subreddit. Join the conversation. We have 1600 wonderful people involved. Join the Discord, join the Patreon. Let's get the bag.